That's so see? true. See, so it's not true. So well, you see, you've what cracked I mean? the code. So we've actually <laughs> answered. <laughs> we've actually answered the hardest question. question. I've answered the question. If you're in a simulation. <laughs> Everybody, welcome back to another episode of Slightly Entertaining. Welcome back, everyone. If you haven't noticed by the obvious theme of Keisha, we are dressed up as nerds. I had to do a little bit extra because, you know, like I got to make myself look like it. But Karma's just here as herself because, you know, she is a nerd. So. You love to bully me, don't you? Exactly. Um, but yeah, anyway, today we are doing an IQ test mm-hmm. and we'll be answering the world's hardest question. After finding out that our IQs are probably two of the highest that exactly. have ever existed, ever existed. Um, so We're stay like tuned. Quadruple for that. digits, like never been seen. Before. Probably, um, yeah. at least, that, at least, if not more. Yeah, probably. like on par with Einstein, probably. His IQ is not even close. Yeah, though. exactly. Um, who is he? What? But yeah, we're also g- so we're gonna compare. We've got the Mensa IQ test and a BuzzFeed IQ test. Okay. So we're gonna be comparing which one is more accurate. Yeah, probably I have the my one guess. That gives the highest one is obviously yeah. most accurate. Um, but also we have the national today for today. Oh, yeah. So today is um, International Binge Day. Oh. So what shows are you binging at the moment? None. Oh, well, I, um, I finished binge watching um, The Rookie on Netflix. Mm, was it good? That was good. Yeah, it was good. I wouldn't call it binge watching because there were like five seasons to watch. So obviously like it wasn't that, but like it was a decent watch. Yeah. Mm? Oh. Like the sh- Sorry, decent watches in, in terms of the time I took to it. The show oh. is actually really good. Yeah. I love it. It's on my list to watch, but I've been it's watching good. Gossip Girl recently. Okay, yeah. Making my way through that. Um, yeah. You know, actually, it's stressful trying to keep up with all the drama that's going on oh, in the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. But you I've know, watched it, but it's entertaining. Um, anyway, today is also National Daughters Day, which we are. We, have we are daughters. daughters so yes. It's, it's Quesadilla Abbe. Day as well. Oh, I love quesadillas. Good quesadilla. World Dream Day. Oh. I know you've had some crazy I've dreams. I've had some crazy dreams, yeah. I, mine are not as crazy as yours, yep. but... You know, I also do have dreams. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, you'll be happy to Some know. Some of us are just more creative. Um, But yeah, let's get straight Maybe into Maybe my bigger dream mind means I have a higher IQ. Because mm. my brain's able to like process more. Maybe you spend all the Even while I sleep, there's so much going on that during the daytime when I'm conscious, it's Oh my or god. Or maybe maybe all your thought is taken up by your dreams that there's none left during well, we'll every find day. Out. We'll find out. But yeah, let's get straight into the first okay. IQ test. Whoosh. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for, you get to sit and listen as we take an IQ test. Mm-hmm. So what do I just start test Carmen? Yep, just start this is made by Mensa Norway, by okay. the way. Oh my god, there's a time limit. Oh my god. What? There's a time limit. Where? In the top left corner when you click start. Oh, I haven't started yet. Oh. Ah, okay. Well, we'll see you in 25 minutes. Well, that took longer than expected. Oh, that my was, God. Um, a whole 20 minutes for that test. Yeah. But I'm hoping this BuzzFeed one will be a bit yeah. quicker. Are you happy with your score? I don't, I don't know. I think so. Like based on the, they gave this little, like a little like bell graph thing. Uh, mm. Yeah. Like, I'm not in the red zone at the end. Yep. Yep. So I'm above we'll average. That. We'll take that. Yep. So we'll same, take that. Same, okay. Same. Okay. Um, now 17 question BuzzFeed. Yes. Hopefully that should be a bit shorter. Um, Is that like the official IQ test? Cause what's, a, ha, ha, who's like the official IQ test? I like, don't how know. do we know like Einstein had that IQ? Like he didn't do this know. IQ test. I don't you know, know what I mean? All, yeah. Surely there's one, but. This will do for us. Basically, what we're saying is no one's IQ is like real. So it's like exactly. whatever you interpret. It's subjective. You know what I mean? <laughs> Einstein probably got easy yeah, questions. Exactly. Did, so. Exactly. Um, okay. First one, which number should come next in the pattern? 48, 24, 12. Well, are you going to say it together? Six. Have you clicked it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which weighs more, a ton of bricks or a ton of feathers? Mm. Mm. What did you say? I'm not telling you. I've already clicked I'm clicking it. it. They weigh the same. They weigh the same. I remember my dad Physics. asked me that when I was like eight years yeah, old literally. and I've never forgot it. Which of these words is a synonym of aloof? Scared, distant, sad, or lonely? I don't know English, guys. What are you putting? Distant. Distant. Yay. If you count from one to a hundred, how many times will you come across the number seven? Oh, what? Okay, like come uh, like the number. Okay. Yeah. What did you say? 20. Okay. Play. Doubt of myself. <laughs> I know. It's... Okay. A book is to reading as a spoon is 
to eating. Well, I mean, technically, yeah, but you could use a spoon for baking if you mix with a spoon. True. You know okay. what I mean? I could see that. You could use a spoon for painting. You could use a spoon for anything. So okay, you, want, you want to argue that to BuzzFeed? I'm just saying. Which of the following does not belong in the group? A rooster, a baseball bat, a fork, or a blanket? Wait, what? Huh? Hello, Loki. Wait. Why is BuzzFeed hard? <laughs> wait, 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 what? <laughs> what? <laughs> One is mean? alive. Ru- is that it? Like. That's what I would have said. Yeah. Okay. YOLO. Oh. Is it? Yeah, it's only living. Okay. Okay, cool. Which number comes next in the pattern? 3, 4, 7, 11, 18. One. 29? Yeah. Yeah, 29. Mm. The, yeah. It was like you multiply by 2 and then minus and then it's minus. Oh, I just added each number before, like 3 plus 7. 3 plus 4 is 7. Oh. 7. 4 plus 7 is 11. 7 plus 11 is 18. Oh, well, the way I did it got the same answer. That's crazy. Maybe it's like, wait, is that the same math? Each number is the sum of itself and the previous. Yeah, that's, so that's what they said. Oh, I had a different way, but it was the same. Crazy. Look at that. <laughs> I think that's the box, guys. Um, and which of these words is most closely a synonym of sex? I don't know what that word means. What's got feckless? It. I don't know what feckless means. Which one makes most sense? Oh, I put ugly. The neck. Mm. What was your oh, score? 16, 17. I got 15 out of 17. Damn. 82%. I feel like that's kind of on par with my... um. You have an advanced IQ. Is that you, Einstein? It mm-hmm. is. It is, actually. Look at I, I feel like that's on par with my um, Mensa and like that terms of range. Yeah, Ish. probably. Ish. Okay, so okay, do you want to reveal the Mensa scores? Okay, yeah. All right, so well, BuzzFeed has placed us above oh, average, yeah, above upper, average. upper quartiles, kind of. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What was your score? 125. I'm 121. <gasps> We're Very so close. close. And I'm putting that down to your um, your UCAT. Hey, stuff. no, that's not the same as the UCAT. We are different. No, no, ones no. But for you've that. been training like your brain in those abstract thinking, but like it shows naturally we have a very similar IQ probably. Um, but yeah, basically, so with the IQ test. The average for like people is a hundred. Okay, three uh, digits. Yep. But one, humankind, we're still there. One standard deviation above the mean, which is a hundred. The average is a hundred. Yeah. Is one hundred and fifteen. So yeah. we're like a bit above that. We're a bit above that. It says equivalent to the ninety fifth percentile for me. Ninety second per- percentile With for a me. Standard deviation of fifteen. Oh. Standard, I'm the standard deviation of fifteen. It's the same standard deviation. Yeah. <laughs> Hence Lower that IQ down. <laughs> no, but how um, is that? how is someone respectfully? How are you fifty five IQ? Like, don't be judgmental. No, but as in like, how do they know if they have learning difficulties? Yeah, but how would these people know what their IQ is? Because I wouldn't have been able to answer the question. Yeah, but someone probably has lower than that if they don't have access to this. You know what I'm trying to say? Oh, like you know what of, I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. if someone can't do that, like why would? They, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm true. assuming people with like a lower IQ, if you maybe haven't had a great education, I suppose you wouldn't have access to this. I'm sure it's like a bigger sample size, so they'd get Must good enough data, who knows? right? Who knows? But to be from? in the Mensa or part of Mensa, whatever. I don't even know. Yeah. yeah. Um, you need above 130 IQ. So actually, we're not far. We're not far. We're not far. We're actually pretty clever. So what is Mensa? Clever cookies. What is Mensa? It's like the like corporation for smart people. Oh, I don't know how to describe it. Nerds, nerd club. No, it's literally the worldwide nerd club. Wow, that's how I describe men. Is my child? I'm just looking at like the tabs on it. Is my child gifted? <laughs> Question mark. I am exceptional. That wow. is so funny. Um, but yeah, so that's very interesting. And what I was gonna say is, I've got some more stuff to talk about in regards okay. to IQ and yeah. all that. Um, I thought it was really interesting that um, like IQ doesn't really correlate to like common sense and stuff. Yeah. Like, not to out you here, but I feel like in the common sense department, one of us is marginally ahead. <laughs> it's not even common stuff, it, it, co- common sense. It's just that sometimes I do dumb stuff. Like, can I tell the story about the sausages? It's not. Okay. <laughs> I have to justify that because it's not like, 
common sense because let I was thinking. It. It's not like let it's me not tell like it. I wasn't thinking. I was thinking. Let me, I thought. Let wrong. me tell it and let them make a judgment okay, okay, and then you justify okay, yeah, yourself. Yeah. Okay. Basically, the story is Keisha's mum one day was making sausages. You know the ones that like join to each other, like there's like a string of sausages. You have to cut them apart. Mm-hmm. And her, she, Keisha saw her mum cutting the sausages apart and removing like the casing on the outside. Mm-hmm. Because her mum wanted to make a recipe that needed the mince in the sausage and not the full sausage. Mm-hmm. But Keisha asked her, oh, are you supposed to take the film off? And your mum said yes. Mm-hmm. So Keisha's mind is going, okay, when you cook sausages or these sausages, you take the film like, off. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Lols, have I been However, that wrong? However, Keisha also ate that meal at dinner and, and how realized was I supposed to there were no that? sausages in you, the okay, meal. Do you remember? Tell me about a dinner that you had, you saw your mum and then tell me what you had for dinner exactly. My dad was cooking onions, garlic, he put olives, capers, pickles. Okay, um, how long beans. ago was that? Two weeks. Exactly. Mine was like months before. How am I supposed to remember what I had for dinner when you, I saw her do that? Look, if you were on thinking, a random chance. If you were thinking, my mom's cooking sausages, but there's no sausages in my dinner. I you might have maybe thought about it. No, I, why would I think that? I just eat. No one sane thinks like... If oh, I see I my mom my cooking mom sausages cooking and I'm not eating sausages, I'm wondering where the sausages went. No, Anyways, the, the point thing. of the no story is then a couple months later, was it? Yeah. Keisha's mum asked her to cook up some sausages. And they were the same ones that came in the string. And Keisha decided that... The film was very obviously on it. Like, it's a slimy film. I've never seen this on a sausage before. Because normally I just have, like, the eight-pack ones, which are separate. Mm. I've never seen this film on the sausage. I'm like, oh, my God. I should probably take it out. It's like this disgusting film on it. So one sausage in, Keisha has removed the yeah. film. It's crumbled apart. She's like, where's the sausage gone? Like, it was so she just decides to do it again to cut another sausage To see if open. my technique was wrong because I'm not very good at cooking. So Because I was doing it messily. So I tried cutting alongside it with scissors and like unraveling that way, but it kept falling apart. And then my mom came in and was like, why are you cutting it? I'm like, because you said to cut it. And she's like, no, not for those sausages. Like it's you the same use your sausage. common sense, and one sausage falls apart. That's Maybe not common you go... sense, though, because I was still thinking it. Like I was like, "Oh, I saw her cook it," and then my brain was like, "Okay, so cut the film." No. If it was a normal sausage, I'm not gonna again. If you've lived it. on this earth for eighteen, almost nineteen, yeah. nineteen years, yeah, you probably know you don't cut the film off sausages. Yeah, but she did that one time. I didn't. I she said that's the sausage. You cut it off the sausage. She didn't say anything. I'm gonna take the mince out. She said. You cut it off the sausage. So but then like, there okay. were no sausages to eat. How would how am I supposed you to would, remember that? You would think. like, if Why I, would I remember that sausage? That's what I had If I saw my dad mint. cooking fish and then we had beef for dinner, I would say, what happened to the it's fish? It's not the same thing. I, I don't, like, I cannot even, like, tell you I do not remember there ever being mint. Like, I'm going to ask her what the actual meal was because, like, I swear to God, it wasn't, like, a complete, like, I made lasagna out of sausage mints. I would have probably remembered that it was like not you weren't even there how do you know I'm sticking up for your mom no. if your mom thought it was funny that's not i back your mom no um anyways my kind of question i wanted to pose with this whole yeah iq thing is does high iq equal high intelligence we'll take the common sense we'll take the social intelligence out that kind of thing but like if you have a high iq score say you're above 130 does that mean like you're really 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 smart or can intel or like knowledge maybe can can it be something acquired over time? Or like I think does knowledge IQ and intelligence change? are two different things. I think IQ is a good measure of intelligence, not knowledge. Mm. Well, actually, I do take that back because IQ stands for intelligence. Yeah, <laughs> like IQ, but is like a good measure being of being smart, maybe. Well, like being smart in terms of knowledge, no, because you have to learn knowledge. But like intelligence could be like the way that you think, like like recognizing patterns, being like abstract mm. thinking, like that stuff. Yeah, I think the IQ, like, like. And do you think intelligence you could change your IQ over time? Like, could you train to change your IQ, yeah. or is it something you're born with? Um, certain things you are probably born with, but that's like how our brain works, right? Like you make neural connections. Yeah. So yeah. But what about people like like you? Tell me if Einstein was growing up in like a third world country with like. No access to education. I don't think he's solving e equals mc squared. You know what I mean? No, but he would still have that IQ, right? Like he would still have, if, even mm. if he grew up in the third world country, he'd mm. still have been born with that brain capacity that he had. But probably it was not just like his as environment high. that wasn't allowing him to reach his full yeah, potential. Yeah, so probably not as high. He would have probably been like a good problem solver in his like thing, but mm. not like. So then it's like nature versus thing. nurture. Mm-hmm. Is, IQ, is IQ more nurture or more nature? Mm-hmm. What do you think? 
IQ? Uh, I think it's I think it's more nurture. Mm. Like it's more nurture than nature. I it's really interesting. We're doing this in uni. It's like a whole topic basically d- like looking at the nature versus nurture mm-hmm. aspect of sports. Um cuz like you're born with a certain like aptitude for things. Like for me with the IQ test, I found the like visual questions a lot easier. Like you know the ones where it's like you add them together and the lines disappear. Mm-hmm. Like those ones I got straight away out. Yeah. Like they were easy, but then the ones where it was like following patterns, mm. I found it so much harder. Mm. So um what I was saying is I can't even remember what I was saying. I've lost my train of thought, but something about like um if you are growing you know if you're born with a certain aptitude for certain things Mm. like you're going to be better at those despite your environment kind Mm. of like that's what does that make sense yeah but i think it's enhanced by your environment yeah for sure but like especially when you're growing up like if you're growing up as like a toddler with like nothing to challenge and your brain's just like stuck there Mm. you're not going to develop more but like if you're like constantly challenged then yeah I feel like. Yeah. But, like, what about, say, people who aren't good at maths, but, like, say you've gone to school with them from primary school? Yeah. Or, like, since ELC for yeah. you, some of those people, you've pretty much had the same educational upbringing. Maybe but a bit like different, but. They're, like, parents, like, their family. That's true. Different. True. But, because, like, they say that, like, people are born, like, they, some people just don't get maths and they never do, no mm. matter how much they do. Like, yeah. do you think that's more nature or nurture? I still think it's nurture. Really? Yeah. Because, like, I feel like, okay, this is also just like, I feel like, I feel like school will like teach you something, but if you're gonna do like, you like, it has to be like extra, you know, Mm. like outside of school because school will teach you the same thing. But if you know more, like, but surely there's exceptions as well because there's like people who are really like those people who go to public schools, even though like we Mm. went to a private school who would be way smarter than us, even though we probably probably, had more They'd probably have like a natural curiosity for things and they look up stuff in their own time and then they read and then they, you know what I mean? Mm. Like I I still think it's like, because you're not, like this is the thing, like you're not going to learn something without learning it. Like you have to have something to learn it from. But that natural curiosity is something you're born with. Yeah, it's something that you need. Yeah. So yeah, some people have it, some people don't. But that's like, so I still think it's nurture because you still have to be in an environment Either you doing it yourself or that's just how you are to, like, help you develop. Hmm. So, yeah. Interesting. That's my thought. Um, that's my take. Hang on. I wrote down some statistics. I'm just mm-hmm. trying to figure out which ones we haven't addressed. Um, Did you know that, like, 70% of Americans still think that, what is it, chocolate milk comes from brown cows? <laughs> <laughs> now, that IQ, <laughs> I don't know what that's from. <laughs> yeah, Americans actually have an anti-IQ. Their school yeah. system is meant to bring it down. You <laughs> do. Um, okay, so before we get into tackling the world's hardest question mm-hmm. with our, you know, 90th percentile exactly. IQs that we have, I thought we'd look a bit at people in the world with the highest IQs and okay. the daily routine of people okay. with high IQs to see, you know, how we compare. Um, so the first one, Young Hoon Kim, and this is from some dodgy website. But okay, we'll, trust yep. it. <laughs> we'll go with that. Um, apparently has an IQ score of 276. Oh, whoa. So someone's actually in the yeah. almost 300 IQ. Um, is so he the highest? I think so. This is the highest in the whoa. article. He's from South Korea. Yeah. Um, has advised, he advises several organizations, including the World Mind Sports Council, okay. the World Memory Championships, and has achieved perfect scores on many intelligence tests. Oh. Um, second one, Johan Wolfgang von Go, goat, yep. Goethe. Yeah. Okay. Um, German polymath, meaning had a wide range of knowledge and expertise in many fields. Oh. He was a scientist, poet, playwright, novelist, and artist. Oh, oh, he's really tackling everything. Yeah, and his IQ was between two ten and two twenty five. Oh, wow. yeah, pretty smart. Yeah, which is interesting that like people from old times have high IQs. That I'm not surprised. <laughs> I feel like the like <laughs> the worldwide average for IQ is just. That is true. <laughs> that is quite true. Our attention spans are getting less. And our brain capacity is going to. <laughs> We're making our way towards oh, zero. You know how I'm like- raising my child to be a world genius. Like, what if, like, you're like your child is like like average now, but they're actually a genius in society later on. We so I'm going to raise a genius. You know, like all the statistics are like aiming towards zero for global warming, yeah, and death or whatever, and IQ. And IQ. <laughs> We're all oh becoming dear. robots. 
Um, okay, number three is Leonardo da Vinci. Okay, yeah. Um, between 180 to 20. Mm. So, you know, pretty high. We all yeah. know who Leonardo da Vinci is, yeah. I hope. Yeah, I hope. Um, Otherwise, that IQ number down there might be yours. <laughs> Literally. Um, James Maxwell. Oh, yeah. Maxwell's equations. His do I is have on my t-shirt right now? Wow. I would like to point out, bring attention to I'd everyone. I'd like to also point out, I've this been, is not my t-shirt, it's my dad's. I've been outed as a nerd, but I could not find a nerdy t-shirt like that in my house uh, if I tried. I'm sorry, and I just said it's my dad's, not mine. In my whole house. Okay. I don't surround myself with nerds. Oh, then, okay, well, why I'm with you right now? Like, that's obviously going to influence something. Mm, so. Sure. Um, anyway, so Maxwell's... You don't need to, you're a nerd yourself. <laughs> Maxwell's IQ is between 190 and 205. Yeah, fair enough. Um, Copernicus, mm. uh, 160 to 200. Okay. Mm, yeah. Mm. William James Sidis okay. C- Sidis was an American child prodigy with an IQ estimated of 200 to 300. Oh, that's a wide range. Yeah. <laughs> 200 okay. to 300. Mine is between 150 100. and 250. Yeah, exactly. I don't see my Mensa application exactly. anywhere. Um, he spoke eight languages, which is pretty impressive. Oh, yes. Um, I'd love to learn mm. more languages, but anyways. Do you know Carl Friedrich Gauss? Yes, I've heard. Of, yeah. Oh, that was more for Oh, sorry. Gauss um, was a German mas- mathematician. Gauss, I don't know how to say his name. Um, greatest mathematician of all time. He had an IQ of 250 to 300. Oh, interesting. Nikola Tesla. Mm. IQ range of 160 to 310. Again, that's huge. Yeah. So, you know, we're actually close to 160 him. to 310. Yeah. That's like double, like one, like 160 times two is like his range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, number 10. I reckon he's high up there. He was a smart guy. Christopher Harata is one of the br- most brilliant astrophysicists of our time. Mm. Um, estimated to be 225. Mm-hmm. It's very, very high. Terence Tao, you know, the mathematician, child prodigy. Mm. Um, estimated between 211 and 230. Oh. So I don't understand these 300 IQ estimates. Yeah. If, like, ones that we have now who, where we have the technology to test it yeah. are nowhere close to that. Yeah. They're either just the people now are not as smart or like, yeah, like how do you know that there are 300 rather than dead? Like. Mm. You know what else is interesting? What? Is that at least most of the modern one, people who have high IQ mm. are Asian, mm. but the ones who have higher IQ in the old times. Are European. Yeah. Probably that's what I'm saying yeah. because of education. Yeah. Like compared back then, European education was like, at its peak and now yeah, it's like now it's the asian yeah. like education and the importance of knowledge in those exactly. cultures is a lot higher so that's why my debate for nature versus nurture is that i do see i do mm. see um but what are these geniuses doing exactly to be a genius what a lot nurturing? of them are scientists and yeah. mathematicians well it makes sense yeah, if you're like, going into such a exactly. you know, <laughs> field um if like you're gonna you know yeah if they're discovering stuff that we're yeah, using every relativity, day now then, yeah, you probably you know need to have an eye high iq yeah anyways but i like jane austen being up there yeah something different well this is i don't know if she's got like the highest iq but this is just in the um article okay yeah. she said that um she always had a workspace with minimal distractions oh, if you I want see, to I see. you know be doing good things mm. so chuck that phone out the room i see yeah well she didn't exactly have a phone to chuck out that's so. true we <laughs> actually had a disadvantage exactly here. it's not my fault that this is the generation i was raised in. i'm trying to do my buzzfeed test put and me I'm back getting... in whenever like centuries ago i best believe i'm a genius well yeah i'm trying to do my buzzfeed test and there's all like these ads popping up on exactly the side it's not my me. fault exactly anyways um daily walk is apparently really good oh okay um charles dickens famously took three hour walks every afternoon three three hours that's crazy. Okay, that's a bit of a waste of time. Probably I a think. stroll, not like a hour walk. But Maybe, it's good to yeah. get out of nature. Yeah. Um, accountability metrics. Mm. So, yeah, making sure that your accountability. Uh, uh, author said he wrote two fifty words per fifteen minutes. Oh, you know what I was just thinking? You know how like modern day people are like, you know, if you want to be the most efficient person, like you know, you gotta like exercise and be healthy. How many of those people do you think went to work out like? <laughs> Like, oh, let me do a 15-minute workout today. Like, can you imagine these scientists? Like, sorry, I need to take a break from my workout. <laughs> like, they probably, I don't know, maybe they were active, but I can't imagine them being like, let's be fit today. When let Newton got hit by the, the apple, he was actually doing sit-ups oh, under yeah, the tree. Oh, yeah, maybe, maybe. Probably. You know, maybe he was doing a, some yoga mm, under the tree. Down the dog and then he got popped on the head. <laughs> exactly. Who knows? 
Um, they do say that it's good to divide work and like fun. Yeah. To maintain a yeah, good that's IQ. Good. That's good. And this one I thought was really interesting. And this is something that like during my HSC, I actually started doing, like mm-hmm. I realized this actually works, is stopping when you're on a roll, not when you're stuck. So when you're like really in the midst of a task and it's so easy to do it because you're just like mm. really caught up in it. That's when you stop because it's easier to pick it back up again mm. rather than stopping when you're stuck. And then it's so much harder to get back, st- like started up again. Mm. I'm the opposite. Like if I have momentum... Like, for example, writing an essay that we had to hand in. Mm. If I have momentum, I'm going to keep momentum because once I come back, it's not going to, like, it's going to take, like, longer to, like, yeah. get when I'm in there, then it'll keep going, keep going, yeah. keep going. But for me, it's, like, I can't stop. Because I then. feel like with essays and stuff, that's different because you mm. actually need to, like, do that. But when it's, like, um, like if I was working through some math problems mm. and I was getting to a point where I was, like, enjoying it but it's something i can come back to i stop in the middle mm, no, rather than stopping the at the end of the exercise the i'll like do it until it's like until i get stopped mm. you know no i like because my hardest thing is just starting once i start i'm fine same exactly which is why i'm like i need to get as much done when i have the momentum otherwise it's going to be difficult if you stop me. with like if i stop my momentum mm. i will never pick it up again but if i have some momentum it's easier to get going that's that's Mm. my take on it anyways um the last thing is it's important to have a supportive partner well guys this is why i'm not successful so when no one's supportive around me when we get supportive partners (laughs) exactly watch our iq shoot up exactly (laughs) through the roof exactly 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 if you want me you gotta be supportive (laughs) wait there's another thing i just read yeah um the last thing to have a good iq Mm. is a limited social life no, I disagree. <laughs> I disagree. Um, yeah. No. That might just be what older people had because they were stuck in their rooms in a dust-filled, I don't know, like study with no social life. But no, I disagree. Picasso, T.S. Eliot, they all say be a recluse. But like... No wonder they were so depressed. Yeah, exactly, they were depressed. Have you read one of Eliot's poems? Exactly, maybe that, yeah, that's probably We studied why. him in year 12. Yeah, that was that's why he know. was probably so successful, but you know... He was also creative, so. Well, anyways, um, we've been talking okay. a lot, but there is still some more talking left to go. Okay. Whoosh. Okay, so the last little thing is mm. with our newfound high IQs, we're yeah. going to be discussing our take on the world's hardest questions. And I feel like we've addressed a lot today already. Yeah. We're getting pretty philosophical. Exactly. But because we have such high IQs, we can think on that level. I've got three questions. I reckon you pick what which one interests you the most. Okay. And we'll delve into it. Well, so it's probably none of them. I hate philosophical. <laughs> I can't even say the word. <laughs> philosophical questions. Um. So the hardest questions are what I found on the internet, scouring different s- okay. sources. What is consciousness? Just what is pass. the meaning of life? Pass. And are we living in a simulation? Pass. Oh, boring. What was that thing? What's the meaning of life? Like 42? Because it was like two die... It's stupid. Um, the meaning of life is to be happy and do what you love. The meaning of life is to die. Anyways, um, I think we should tackle, are we living in a simulation? Yeah, I think that's interesting. Do you okay. think? <laughs> I personally don't believe yeah, we're me living neither. in a simulation. <laughs> me neither. I think that's just a bit out of... Yeah. And even if we are, don't tell me. I don't I don't care. Let me live. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Like, it won't affect me knowing if it's a simulation or not. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, like I feel like people have had experience that they believe that shows that mm. we're living in a simulation. Like, have you watched The Matrix? Is, I haven't, but I've been yeah. meaning to. Yeah, yeah. It's like, would you escape or would you would you take the red pill or the blue pill, Carmen? Look, honestly, I would probably te- escape the simulation just because my curiosity would get the better of me. It's like, I, if I knew I was living in a simulation... But what if I outside the not... simulation is worse than the simulation? What if the simulation was made so that people would be happy and live a better life because outside it's, like, a terrible, like, place? I could not live my life knowing everything around me is fake. I wouldn't care. If it was, like, if I was happy and if this was, like, fine, I'd just stay in it. Mm. It was like, I think that, that's the debate we've had is that, like, personally, I would prefer to know the truth Mm. and I would find happiness Mm. in that real world. But if I'm living in a simulation, I will constantly have in the back of my mind, this isn't real, this means nothing, that kind of stuff. And I'll always be wanting to know. But what if you feel it's real? But like, like, I know it's not real. You'd feel it's real. Like all your emotions are real. But like, I know it's not real. So I 
would like I'd feel yeah I'd feel happy but then I'd be like well but what actually is there to the world my world is a lie like I need to know what's actually out there but it's like the world that you've been living in so it is your world but it's like you know it's like okay like if an ant like in their world that's their world but would an ant be curious what a human does maybe but it's their world you know what I mean I'm curious what a dog does yeah but you you can't like as in like would you go and be a dog if you could if I had an option to, yeah. Their life sounds great, actually. Actually, being this one's life, yeah. This and one's fed life. and great. just sleep all day. His life. He, he looks like he, he's sleeping right now. Sleep, eat, play, that's it. <laughs> but yeah, what's, what's your perspective on it? Like, what, what's your reasoning behind not? Because if I was, like, like, happy and fine and enjoying life, then, yeah, I'd stay. If I wasn't, probably I'd leave. But if I'm fine with what I have, then, yeah. And what would you think about, like, knowing there's a simulation out, like or, like, another world out there? Would you... No, because like, say it's like like you're leaving like all your friends and family. Like then what? But they can come with you. It's not like no. Well, like no, but it's a different life. You know what I mean? Like if it's a simulation, it's not real. So like yeah. they're not. So they're not actually like. So they're not real people. So yeah. they can't come with you. Well, that would kill me. Like knowing my friends and family aren't real. Like they're just things I've made up or been. Yeah. Led so to I'd want to stay with. They're not real people. <laughs> I would want to go. They make f- me feel real. If it feels real, then yeah, I'd stay. I'd want to go find real, tangible people. What if they don't exist? What is reality? But what if that's what I'm saying? What if the simulation? There's like no one. It's just empty space. What do you mean? Like the simulation? Yeah. Like outside of it, that it's nothing. Like there's no people. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, like you could I'm be the- leaving what's normal yeah. right now, like what we're saying is normal here, yeah. like that, for nothing. Cause so you, cause but you at least know. I would know. But you'd just be existing in nothingness. But it'd be better than... You'd be existing in existing nothingness in than lie. existing in life. Or like, I don't know, like, what if you're the only person that's real? Like, the only person in the world? Yeah. Like, you know how you're just saying there's nothing. So, yeah. like, what if genuinely yeah you you are the only person in the world then why would i leave the simulation to no, be no, 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 but like just what do you like how does that make you like that makes me feel so weird yeah but like, but like if if i'm th- like if you're fake right now i'm feeling that you're real though yeah but like i don't know like i'm just like my mind gets boggled i think about this a lot it's just like everything like you could not be real i wouldn't know any different like mm. i'm the only thing that i know for sure is real do you mm. know what i mean well, technically, how do you know that the simulation is real then if it's in a simulation? Like, what if the simulation is simulation of the simulation? You know what I Hold mean? Hold up. Wait, no, do you get what Hold I mean? No, 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 I get, get what you mean. mean. Like, if, if it's nothing real, if nothing in this is real, how do you know that that is real? Like, the simulation is real. You don't. What if, yeah, there's like a, there's a secondary simulation to make us want to go back into this simulation. Yeah. Right? Hear me out. So this is our simulation. Yeah. If we step out, we're one person in nothingness. Yeah. But that's actually another simulation. Okay, that's not a what second I wall of, No, but this is my yeah. second idea. A second wall of defense yeah. so that people controlling us in yeah. their little experiment. Exactly. They have want us to, you know. Yeah. My thing was, if this is a simulation. Wait, no, I lost where I was. Wait, wait. Let me, <laughs> let me think back to it. It was a really good point. It was like, if this is a simulation, then, oh, okay. If this life is a simulation and it's not real, mm-hmm. then the simulation isn't real. If you're finding out there's a simulation, but this life is not real, it's a lie. Yeah. The fact that you're finding out it's a simulation in this life is a lie. That's so see? true. See, so it's not true. So, Ooh. You see, you've what cracked I mean? the code. So we've actually <laughs> answered. <laughs> we've actually answered the hardest the question. question. I've answered the question. If you're in a simulation, that then you're everything. They're saying everything in here is a lie. The fact that you've discovered it's a simulation is a lie. So therefore, we're not living in a simulation. <laughs> you're actually so smart, <laughs> guys. We did it. We did it. We cracked the code. <laughs> we won life. Get us up to 400 IQ. Literally watch that shoot up. Exactly. <sighs> what a way to end. Yeah, that's a very good ending to the podcast. Guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Post this on every social media podcast. Gotta get the word out. Two Aussie girls cracked the code of life. <laughs> Solved the, the biggest question. Ended the simulation question. debate. We literally did. <laughs> on, a, on, a, on a 45 subscriber podcast. <laughs> Spread the news, everyone. (laughs) On that note, we'll see you next time for another episode. 
we're gonna go and just rest our brains because <laughs> yeah, it was too much. I need some like useless like TikTok to like dumb it down again. <laughs> I need to put my brain back to resting level. Yeah. It's stimulated. She's worked too, too hard. hard. Too I much. can see the veins popping. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> Okay, we'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye. This is DJ Cumin and MC Key signing out. Good night.